I wanted to record a video where we are comparing values that don't have the same place value. So sometimes when we're dealing with large numbers, millions, billions, trillions, those noun adjective description of the numbers are part of the numbers. And we have to be careful with matching them up. So for example, suppose I wanted to look at a ratio and I want to look at ratios that are per capita. Per capita means per person. Per person, meaning we're going to divide by the population. So we're given some value. We want to see how much each person would get if we divide it up equally. So an example with a large number would be the CARES Act uh, that was passed because of the coronavirus. The CARES Act was a $900 billion package. Let's say there's about 330 million Americans. It's actually slightly more than that. But I'm interested in what that cost or what we received per person if we had split it up evenly. All right, so the order of a ratio matters. We want the value per person. And I want to include in the values those noun adjectives I was talking about, things like millions and billions. Those are important parts of our number. So it's not just 900, right? It's 900 billion, 330 million. So we want to take the $900 billion and we want to make a ratio with our 330 million people. Now there are several ways to do that. I'm going to show you several. I don't really care which way you do it as long as you take the billion and million into consideration. So I'm just going to start by writing it as it was given in words. Okay, the next thing that might be helpful, let's turn those words into the whole number, the whole standard number. So sometimes I say, when in doubt, let's write it out. What does 900 billion look like? Well, it has a 900 out front. Billion is 10 to the ninth. So when we say they spent 900 billion, that means 900 of the $1 billion pieces. In other words, I'm gonna add nine zeros to this. And then I have to stop and look at the number and say, okay, yes, that is 900 billion. I was having to stop and think about it. How can I tell it's 900 billion? Well, these are my, right, my hundreds and tens and ones. These are my thousands in this section. These are my millions in this section. These are my billions in this section. So th those take a little practice. I have to get to know those special names for numbers. Okay, 330 million. This one may be a little easier to recognize. So I'll have the 330 and I'm taking that and adding six zeros because a million is six zeros. So I have 330 million literally here. Now, you could probably put that in your calculator if you wanna do it that way, that's fine. I can see right now, I could also cancel out a lot of those zeros. That's also fine. This would be a good place to use our scientific notation as well. Some good practice for us. Sometimes I use something called engineering notation. Now this is not scientific notation. I would be counted wrong if I wrote down 900 billion as 900 times 10 to the ninth, if I was asked to do scientific notation, but this is an engineering notation. It's equivalent to the value. So sometimes I'm a little bit lazy. I'll just put it in my calculator like this and 330 times 10 to the six. It's engineering notation, kind of a mix between regular numbers and scientific notation. How do I put it in true scientific notation? All right, true scientific notation, only one non-zero digit allowed out front. Billion is 10 to the ninth, but I have 900 billion. 100 is 10 squared, billion is 10 to the ninth. Put together the two and the nine, I have a total of 11. Or if I were to come back and count how many places from the decimal point to get to the point just after the nine, count them up. That's 11. Same thing for 330 million. I have to make it 3.3. Million is 10 to the sixth. 
But in addition to the six zeros, right, we have two more spots we would have to move for the hundred part. We have 10 to the eight total. Just depending on what you were asked to do. If you're asked to do it in scientific notation, then that's how I need to do it. But if they don't really care how you do it, any of these four options would, would really work for us. All right, so let's practice with calculator here. Now in this calculator, to do the times 10 to the, I hit the E on my, on my keyboard, not, not this E on the calculator, that's something else. I'll hit the E on my keyboard and it says E plus zero. It's saying, what exponent? 11. So nine times 10 to the 11th is how the calculator interprets that. Now, depending on what kind of calculator you have, be careful with division. You might need to put parentheses. So I just put a left parenthesis and I'm typing 3.3, hitting the letter E on my keyboard and telling it eighth exponent and then closing my parenthesis. Because if you don't put parentheses on some calculators around the bottom here, your calculator doesn't know that the 10 to the eighth is in the bottom. So that's why I might need parentheses. Uh, the calculator on the computer is not that great here. It turned them into regular numbers and it turned my answer into regular numbers, which is fine because that's ultimately what I'm going to want. In scientific notation though, nine divided by 3.3 is 2.7 repeating. And then subtracting the exponents, right, is 10 to the third. Or let's put it back in terms of the problem. The CARES Act spent $2,727 per person in the US. All right, so there's per capita. But wait, there, there's more. Let's stick with this topic of large numbers. And I want to review some budgetary terms with you. There are surplus, deficit, savings, debt, all budgetary terms, all related. Let's start with just a, a person as an example. We have Sally. Sally has $2,500 worth of expenses in January but only brings in $2,250. How would you describe this situation? They didn't give us much instruction there. We could describe the situation lots of ways, but I think they want us to use some of the terminology above. So when we think about your budget at the end of the month, we're often interested in, did what I bring in cover what I spent? So we typically take our income minus our expenses and see what happens. We can already see, Right, you can see what happened with Sally here. She only brought in $2,250. She spent $2,500. She's, she's in the red, she's in the negative. That negative 250, we call that a deficit. It's a shortfall just for January, a one-time happening. So deficits refer to for whatever period a budget is for, whether you are short. She would have had extra money, we would have called that a surplus. So she had a $250 deficit. Does she have a $250 debt? Maybe, we, we don't know enough about Sally. Haven't you ever been short on money for a month or a week or a year? Does it necessarily mean you're in debt? No, maybe she overspent by $250 and had to dip into her savings. If she had enough savings, She's not in debt. So what are savings and debt? They're accumulations. So they are longer term. They're what you have total after all your, your budgets have come in. Now, let's look at one with some big numbers like a country might have. Suppose a country spends $980 billion in a budgetary year and has receipts or income of $1.2 trillion. So countries don't really have incomes, but they get money from right, taxes or fines, things like that. We'll call it income here just for the sake of simplicity. Now notice we have some of those big number words again and they don't match. So this is where I have to be really careful. 1.2 trillion, that's how much they brought in. 
And I want to compare that to 980 billion. Since they don't match, they aren't like terms, I can't just subtract them. Again, I think it's helpful to write the whole number out because honestly, scientific notation is not going to help me too much here either. I guess I could try to write them both in trillions or billions. I think that's going to confuse more people than it's going to help. I say, when in doubt, let's write it out. So the, the decimal and the 1.2 trillion becomes one comma two. All right, I'm gonna start adding zeros. Trillion is 10 to the 12th. So when I'm done, that one should be out front and there should be 12 digits behind it. Let's see if I can get them all here. And then I have to stop and look back at it. Did, did I get that in the right spot? So I start looking, you know, here's, here's my, my ones, tens, hundreds place. Uh, here's my thousands. These things are in millions, then billions then trillions. All right, so I think I got that one in the right spot. What about 980 billion? Well, billion is 10 to the nine. So we're gonna have the 980 all out front. The decimal there is at the end of the 980, so a comma there, and then nine zeros. I'm trying to go ahead and line it up because that's what I want to do here. There we go. So now they're lined up. Now I can take that difference. That's a lot of zeros to type in a calculator. So what I might do in my calculator is just do this front part, 1200 minus 980 is 220. 220, that's in the billion spot. Now, if you're entering this into a homework program, you gotta pay attention. Does the box have the word billion next to it? In that case, I want to figure out you know, where the billion spot is at. Maybe they want me to go to the tenths of billion or something. I have to figure out where that's at so I can type it in in that form. Oh, and this is a 220 billion. These are dollars. And this country had a surplus, right? They had excess money. All right, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. Uh, we just wanna be really careful about aligning and making sure that we have like values matched with each other.